Hello everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to build a simple shotgun. Totally automated, except for pulling one lever, self-resetting, no complex machinery, no logic gates, nothing like that. Just a simple, powerful, yet highly effective weapon. But before we take a look at that, let's take a look at a simpler version so I explain to you how it works. Okay, here we got a one-shot shotgun. Same setup, just looks a little bit simpler, easy to explain. Okay, you see the cart will come up empty from the ramp right here. It hits the track stop where it's uh, stopped and reloaded, and then a dwarf will give it a push right down into this channel right here. Now we drop down into the channel. Here, the cart's sitting on a hatch. So this is the loaded state. You gotta make sure that your hatches are blocked in somehow or else the dwarves will walk over and pick up the cart and bring it back to the uh, beginning. Okay, so you got a minecart sitting on a hatch loaded. This hatch is connected to a lever. I do that on purpose. I like to, I like to pull the lever and fire the gun myself. You can fully automate it through pr pressure plates in your uh, range or your kill chamber if you wanted to. I personally like to pull the trigger myself though. But that's just me. Okay, so when the hatch opens, the cart will drop again down through a channel onto this track. This is the, uh, the barrel of the gun. Now these here are accelerators. It's a straight barrel. It doesn't span multi-Z levels. These accelerators will um, speed up the mine cart where it slams into this wall right here. Now there's another channel right here. But before we go down, we're going to go up one. One Z level up. We have the range right here. It's a 7 by 30. This seems to work well for me. You don't want it too long or too wide because you want the uh, your target to be hit by your projectiles. So the 7 by 30 works for me. These three right here are fortifications. You're going to need fortifications there so the projectiles will fly through the wall. Okay, so we go down a level, back down to the uh, the chamber level, or the barrel level. When a cart hits this wall, it'll drop down through this channel right here to the return track. Now again, it hits some accelerators, and then it just simply um, loops around right here onto a ramp where it goes up, back to the beginning, and it starts over again. It's that simple. But let's take a look at the specifics of this. Now I have a track stop and a hauling stop. My track stop defined as high as friction. Dump on arrival, no, because it's not going to have any contents when it comes back to dump. Let's look at the hauling stop. The hauling stop is simple. Defined as push south immediately. You want it to push, not to guide or ride when full of desired items and then I linked it to a stockpile and that's pretty much it it's it's pretty simple and well when the cart is full the dwarf will come over and push it down into the channel where the hatch is ready to hold it and ready to fire these accelerators here now they can be a bit tricky to build because they're dependent on what direction the track is going because this is a north-south track these accelerators are going to be southwest or southeast either one would work now if we go down this is a south north track so these accelerators have to be northwest or northeast again whichever uh, whichever one you want so the east and west here they're a little different um, the east to west track will have to have a west north or west south accelerator I believe and the west to east track would have to have an east north or east south accelerator. So it can get a little tricky when you're building those but it's simple. And that that's about it. That's how simple the uh, that's the basic fundamentals of a shotgun. So now let's take a look at the main weapon. Okay here we are at the five barrel version of the same gun. It's the same exact thing. Everything's the same. 
except more tracks, pressure plates, and floodgates to separate the minecarts because they all merge onto the same um, barrel. And on the return track, I have floodgates to separate them. All right, so the tracks are defined exactly the same, all five of them, as the uh, the first the first gun. And over here, you can see my ammo. Now, uh, carts can hold uh, a different amount of different items. I have three of these five guns loaded with colored stone, what I had laying around, but they could only hold five stone. Over here, I have. Uh, platinum bars and lead bars. At maximum capacity, a car could hold 83 bars of anything. That's that's a lot of projectiles in one car. I only have them set to be fully loaded when it comes to the bars, so that's uh, roughly a little over 40 bars. And then the last three will only shoot five stones each. But you can load them with whatever you want. They could hold 500 spiked weapons, spiked balls. So you could, as you can see, you could get uh, quite creative and um, launch a lot of projectiles at your targets if you wanted to. Okay, so let's let's do a, a brief overview of this before we actually fire it. So it's same thing down here is the um, the chamber where the carts are sitting on at the hatches. It's ready to be fired. I got my doors here, which are forbidden, so the dwarfs don't walk by and pick them up. And we drop down here and. This is a lot more track, but what's happening here is the uh, these are all delays because each track has to be a certain time behind the one in front of it, which gives the floodgates time to close and separate the carts back onto their individual tracks. Right here, where the, all the accelerators are, is the main is the barrel, and then I have the four different um, delay chambers. The first round, which is on the left here, pretty much goes straight down to the barrel, and everything else will will go around their track and cause the delay. Here's the wall. Okay, we go up one. Same exact killing chamber. Uh, as you see, I had a little bit of fun in here already. And a side note, I built this weapon in a fortress that I gave up on. I just wanted to use it for practice and uh, to, you know teach myself how to do this stuff. So it's kind of built in a, an area where it's, I had the free space. It's a little bit of a dist distance away from my main hub. So um, it, it takes a little bit for my dwarfs to reload this a little bit of time. But ideally, when you build this, what you want to do is have this close to your, your main fort, obviously. and your, So it's close to your stockpiles and your dwarfs, your manpower. And you also want to make this chamber here somehow your... Uh, your main entrance to your your fort so that'll divert the animals or whatever is attacking your fortress any beasts or go goblins will come through this main chamber and then you can lock them in you can divert them using a series of drawbridges and then you can lock them in using drawbridges where they're uh, totally at your mercy and <laughs> that's where the fun happens so now we go down again this is the the barrel. We go down to the return chamber, uh, return track. Okay, it makes it right, and as you can see here, this is where the separation begins. Oh. Now, let me go back for a minute here. I didn't explain these pressure plates. So there's a pressure plate on each track. Now this pressure plate has the first, the first round. It will hit this pressure plate, and that will release the second minecart, or the second round. That hits that pressure plate, releases the third minecart, this pressure plate will release the fourth. This pressure plate will release the fifth. Now the fifth has a pressure plate also, and what that does, that's connected to all five hatches. So when that pressure plate is triggered, all five hatches will close. So when the dwarves reload the minecarts and push them onto the hatches, they'll be closed and again awaiting your command to fire. So the same thing is going on here. The first cart will zoom around, go straight up, to the top track, hit this pressure plate, this will close a floodgate that I have right here. Now the second cart is going to come and go through this track because the floodgate will be closed so it can't go. And I'll hit this pressure plate to close this flood floodgate. And a third cart will go through this track and so on and so forth until the fourth cart will 
go down this track. And this pressure plate here is connected to all of these floodgates. And what that does is open the floodgates. It returns them to the open state, effectively resetting the whole gun, and it's ready to be fired again. And they just simply travel up back to their starting position where they'll, they'll hit their track stop, be reloaded, pushed onto the hatches, and ready to fire. So we're going to take a look at each aspect of the uh, gun in motion before we actually um, kill some stuff. The first look we're going to have is the delay tracks. So I already gave the command to pull the lever, which is back at my main hub in this fort. I'm going to unpause it, and you're going to see the carts drop. The first cart will drop on the left, the last cart is on the right. You'll watch them go around their delay tracks and hit the uh, pressure plates to release the next cart. There goes the first, the second. The first cart already went down the chamber, or right down the barrel. And you can see the um, second cart is at the bottom left, and there it goes, it's just fired. The third cart is at the top left. And there it goes, down the barrel. Fourth cart is at the bottom right here. It's about to hit its accelerators. There it goes. It just fired. And the fifth cart, there you go, at the top right. There it goes. It fired. Next, we're going to look at the floodgates closing to separate the carts onto their tracks. Okay, I paused in. And the carts will come around in a second. There's the first one. Goes to the top. Hits the pressure plate. There's the floodgate. Closes just in time. The floodgates need about a four or five second um, space buffer so they have sufficient time to close before the next cart. As you can see, here comes the last cart, and it's going to reset, open up all the floodgates, and there you go, systems reset. Here you can see my dwarves are busy reloading minecarts. The three on the right have already been pushed onto the track because they only carry five stone. However, the, uh, the first two have to be loaded with about 40 bars each, so they take a little bit longer to reload. Okay, the gun has been reloaded, and now we're going to have some fun. Unfortunately, I don't have any bad critters to uh, put in my chamber here. Like I said, this is a, a fortress I kind of stopped playing. I just use it for testing purposes now. So no goblins, no uh, forgotten beasts or anything. But I do have a bunch of dogs, so unfortunately we're going to test this on seven dogs I have in the chamber here. I gave the command and I'm just gonna pause the game in and then we're gonna watch the carnage be unleashed. There we go. Oh, and there's the first shot and it it pretty much dominated. Looks like we got one dog left and that yeah he's gone. He's totally gone now. So those were the bars, which can hold a lot more projectiles. And then comes the five stone for the next three shots. But there's nothing left. It, it already crushed our victims. Let's just look at the last shot here. Okay, and we can look at the combat log really quick. These are our seven dogs. This is always fun to, to uh, go through. You could see Platinum Bar strikes the stray dog in the tail and the injured part is crushed. An artery has been opened by the attack and it's always fun to go through this stuff. The lower body takes the full force of the impact, bruising the fat. He had a lot more than fat that got bruised. Here, here's a good one. The Platinum Bar strike the stray dog in the left rear leg any injured part explodes into gore. Yeah, there's a whole lot of that going on. Okay, the gun is reloaded and ready to go again, and I loaded up 10 dogs this time in the on the firing range. I don't like to kill dogs 
but that's all I had laying around. And we'll go out here on the uh, on one last shot of uh, these dogs getting dominated. Now the first uh, shot of bars will pretty much wipe out these 10 dogs I have in here. But keep in mind, if you were to put, um, say if you were to trap a forgotten beast in here s somehow, it would require more than just uh, two shots of bars and then three shots of, of stone. You would want to take advantage of all five shots. So you could load anything in your mine carts. You, would, you could load them all up with the full amount of bars, which is 83. You could load them all up with 500 spiked balls. That'll pretty much take care of uh, most things in this game. Or, you know, if you want, you could load them up with crystal glass beehives or diamond encrusted piccolos. Whatever you want. That's the beauty of this game. So that's the five round shotgun. Simple. It's a lot of fun to play with. And if you make one, enjoy its awesome power and have fun with it. Thanks for watching.